Well, this here is the new Birmingham Library. I think it's got an Islamic influence, but you know, well, I know as well that in fact it was a Danish architect. Oh, let's stop talking, let's go inside. <laughs> <laughs> And here is the art gallery where we were earlier. And now we're kind of looking out across. And over there is the rotunda. Uh, there, this is the rotunda, which was kind of an iconic building of the 60s. It's, it's a cylinder. And everything in the 60s had, had the rotunda in it, if it mentioned Birmingham. And this here certainly used to be the, the Holiday Inn. That looks like there's a lot of yeah. interesting stuff in the drawer up there as well. Yeah. A lot of little details. Yeah. I really like the drawing this building because it's got it's a, quite a strange shape. It's like a hexagon. Yeah. It's sort of strange hexagon. And then the windows kind of curve round, so you can get some really nice angles. Yeah. And also, you like perching. You like the idea of perching. I do. Yeah. I like. I just, can, can't you just imagine a kind of Batman sitting up there on his perch <laughs> over to the surveying the city? I really like that idea. Um, so, do you see yourself as a, a, a caped crusader, or or to somebody who likes to sit and watch? <laughs> I think maybe I see myself as a caped crusader. But actually, I just like to sit and watch. Yeah. That's probably. It. I do like that idea of. Um, the way that superheroes are portrayed as like these characters that are protectors of the city and they like look after it and they they're kind of different from everyone else so they take they go to these really high points in the cities like the top of buildings on their own and then they just kind of keep watch of the city I think that's a really interesting idea and then but then do you think if you're drawing the city you're, you're protecting this moment in time do you think that might <laughs> Yes. Am I reading too much? Yes. <laughs> and here's another. There's another one behind here, which is the Hyatt Regency. Yeah, I really like this one. You can see there's loads of really interesting reflections in it. Yeah, I mean, in the camera now, it's almost transparent. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. And we got because you got the the horizon reflected mm. in the glass, and it, 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 come and see. Look, in fact, in fact, you got people oh, wow, yeah. reflected in it as well. It's just another layer, isn't it? So another layer. layers and layers. Yeah. <laughs> Because we're looking through the glass here. Yeah. I've had quite a few people say, how do you draw more cityscapes? And what do you do? You just sit down and do it, really. That's the only I way. It's I think the only way. It's the only way with anything, any drawing, is just to sit down and get on with it, really, isn't it? I think some people get preoccupied with this, because it, it's so overwhelming, there's so much. But I always think if you start with one window, yeah. then before you know it, you'll have a whole building. Yeah. You know, and don't, that's another thing, I always think, don't worry about perspective or straight lines. Sometimes it's more interesting if there's a bit of character. And, yeah. they, um, and it'll all come together, <laughs> hopefully. Well, it kind of it does, because yeah, you just have to start somewhere and I always find in the end it comes together. Yeah. And if it goes all wrong, then at least you've worked out what's wrong and you can get it right next exactly, time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And also, if, if it looked like, if it just looked like this, you might as well take a photograph. But if you... Yeah are drawing it how you see it then it has a bit of personality in it as well and you don't have to draw everything do you you can just draw the bits that you draw like the bits that you want yeah and you don't have to draw everything <laughs> no whereas a camera has to take everything in yeah that's true and you can choose the bits that you like yeah, sometimes I miss out a building if it's a bit, if it's an annoying shape. Yeah, <laughs> or in the wrong place. Yeah, you can... wrong place. Move it over a little bit. Yeah. It's like when we were looking at the painting earlier, the, um, I was talking to a historian and they said that some of the buildings have been moved. He's moved them just to make it look a little bit more beautiful yeah. in its composition. So. Yeah. Which is your artist's license. It is. That's, yeah. that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Okay. See, this is the other thing that people hate, isn't it? It's, yeah, where blank to start? Sheet, blank sheet of paper. Well, the best thing to do is to work, first of all work out <laughs> which, which ones of your pens it? work. I've got my favourite pen, which is the oh. new Sharpie Magnum. Wow. Which is, look at the size difference. I will, look at put that. A, I will put a link to the Amazon. <laughs> yeah, they're really expensive, but they're so good. So much fun. Gigantic. And another few favourites. I really like these. Oh, I don't need that. They're chalk pens. All oh, right. Which is probably what those other ones I should... No, they're not, are they? They're, they're kind of like that, actually, but they're... I won't do it now, but you can actually yeah. draw on windows. Yeah. Um, and they 
they come out and they're kind of, this one's a white one. Stylish pencil case is what every oh, girl needs. Good. Boys don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with the top of that building because that's okay. my favourite bit. Right. It's a really fine pen. Yeah, this is a 0.05. Not point not five. Mm. So it's not Sorry, even, not zero not, not zero, 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 zero five. Yeah. yeah. I usually I usually break these ones actually. Yeah. After a little while. Or wear them down. Mm. And then it's almost impossible to talk at the same time, isn't it? <laughs> I found when I started doing my videos, I was. People often leave comments saying, Are you on drugs? <laughs> and, and in a way, I was, I think, because it was so new and so exciting that I was on this. Every time I made a video, I had an adrenaline high. Oh, I see, yeah. And, and I was just. Little, 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 little. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and now I'm just kind of no, 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 <laughs> right, right, just concentrating on the drawing and I think they must be really boring now. Yeah. It's hard, quite hard when you're concentrating, isn't it? I find when I'm at home yeah. or, or when I'm in my studio and doing some drawing, quite often I don't talk for about eight hours. Yeah. And then, and then it's, you're going into a bit of a trance, I think. Yeah. Kind of meditative. Mm -hmm. But I think you need to get into a, a, a mode of concentration. I think you do, yeah. I, I think sometimes I think, oh, I'll just draw that, and then it's rubbish, and I get really frustrated, and, and you've got to take it seriously. Yeah, I think you do. Get into that. Like and also, the more you do it, the more it isn't a, a kind of alien thing for you to be doing. Yeah. So you just, it feels quite natural to just yeah. have to, oh, you've got five minutes, so I'll just pick up a... Pick and, up a pen. Stuff to and in fact, you're, you're doing an aerial view, so you're imagining. Yeah, no, I've totally made this up. I was so interested in that top part. Yeah. I was thinking, I'd rather see what's going on on the roof. You can see it from yeah. this angle. So. so you're not actually drawing what's there, but you are, no. but you're drawing your imagination and knowing to see what's you there, and, which is your kind of, uh, what, memory from aerial... Well, you, I mean, you've got an aerial view of this building over here. Yeah. That little building there, so you can kind of, you can kind of use that to help your imagination. Exactly, you can start to think about how it, yeah. what might be there. Yeah, that's fascinating. Whereas I'm now starting, I'm just sort of obsessing about these, these angles <laughs> and getting this line in. So we've got, there's a, a line coming down there and that's what I'm doing, getting that line in there which will allow me then to arrange all the other windows in but then it's going to be an exaggerated perspective all the same yeah! you can see the light is really nice and these white buildings in the distance are really glowing so i'm going to forget about all the stuff in the tree and i'm going to have a go and how are you doing here sarah i'm good i'm getting a bit obsessive about these windows um but you can see it's kind of building up like a it's almost like a really flat pattern i suppose yeah and it's i'm really not worrying at all about actual perspective yeah. or what's kind of sort of real scale sizes of things yeah i'm just seeing a building and getting it down as quickly yeah. as possible and quite often also what i'm doing is i'm getting a bit bored of doing some of these windows so i put, <laughs> put in what there is and i can finish them off later so i know that they've got those two designs there yeah and that carries on up down there, so I will get that done a bit later on. So you can do that in front of the TV? I can, yeah. yeah. I can just <laughs> get that done. Some boring, awesome yeah, boring work later on. <laughs> well, the, there's been a bit of a storm here, and, and, and these buildings have been sort of standing out against the darkness. So this is what I've been trying to get here. And I've just been washing in all this sky. And meanwhile, you're still working on your wind. I know. I, I don't know how you've done so much. I, just, I use a bigger pen. <laughs> I know, it's this tiny, tiny pen. So you've got this really, really fine shading going on here. It's, mm, it's quite nice. This you can, It's almost like just running out as well. So you can get some really nice sort of yeah. slightly faded lines going on as well. So this is the rotunda, which is now lived in and used to be offices 
Now apparently it's a kind of a cool place to have an apartment. And this is my very scrappy drawing of what I'm seeing. And why am I doing this? I'm doing this, this is kind of an old memoir really, and it kind of, I think, you know, it might be another 20 years or something, and I'll just suddenly slot something like this into a picture. <laughs> also, at the moment, I'm working on a book with the city in, so it's kind of, you know, just practice really. Whereas over here, <laughs> Sarah is still, <laughs> still on the there's amazing little detail. bit. I'm starting to build up some of these little buildings in the background. I'd really like creating like a really dense, like that density of pattern, I think. Yeah. I'm going to try and fill this book. Mm. And Sarah, you are going off to Chicago next month. I am, yes. Chicago, as they say oh. in Calamity Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do a residency there. And I can't wait because. I can climb to the top of the highest buildings there and make some drawings is even better views than this. Uh. And it'll be a whole new landscape. It should be really good. Um, and it's going to be much more like Gotham City. It is. <laughs> well, that's, that's the only in theory, that's going. New York, isn't it? That, I think. But, <laughs> yeah. but the buildings are going to be much higher. They will. They'll be much higher. And closer and together, more dense. Or they, but it's not I think they will be in places, but they, it's just uh, because it's on the. Um, edge of Lake Michigan, so yeah. you've got a really nice beach as well, and then yeah. you've got a, a, the waterways actually run into the cities between the skyscrapers, so you can get on a boat and sort of go have an architecture tour while you're sitting on a boat or a ferry, sort of floating through the city. Yeah. So it's a really unusual cityscape. Yeah. Um, but what I've decided to do, I've been making drawings of Chicago from photographs that I've got. Mm. Never been, but I've made about 20 drawings. And they're like really idealistic, like slightly fantasy drawings. Right. And and I'm gonna so I've done twenty and then when I get when I get there I'm gonna do another twenty. So I've got some which are like these kind of dream like drawings of what I think it's gonna be and then I'll have twenty when I get back. Of what it's of what it's actually like. like, so I can kind of put them side by side. Now Sarah, tell me what have you got in this little pocket? In this pocket? folder, well <laughs> you can see. I do a lot of drawings on scraps of paper. So yeah, these are some I showed you on the big picture earlier, yeah. there was loads of drawings of tiny people. Yeah. These are just sketches of people out and about in the street. Cool. But also some, yeah, there's a few zombies in there. There's, there's the, some also slightly this is, more fantasy related This is because you've been playing computer games all night <laughs> and it's kind of infected your brain. Yeah, maybe it has infected my brain. <laughs> there's some more different poses of people walking. Really, really tiny. Now where have you done those? Have you just... They've, I think these are probably... Are they out of your head or have you been actually sitting in the street drawing people or...? A bit of both, I think. Both, yeah. um, some of these more structured ones probably just yeah. at home. But some of these ones are more people standing around, yeah. very quick line Some drawings. have got little ticks over there. Hey. Yeah, these are the ones which were included. The approved people. Yeah, approved. I didn't like some of them. See, this, <laughs> this lady, she had a bit of a weird foot so she didn't get yeah. in. Um, so yeah, I said yeah. I was doing... Four, I'd be doing these drawings of Chicago, which are like drawings which of the city, a slightly fantasy, but also based on some postcards that people have sent me. And I've got a friend who went recently who took a roll of film and sent me all of her photographs. Right. So, this is so your idea of your visualization. Yeah, exactly. This is a visualization of yeah, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, before so you go. These, which I can show you the first layer, and they're drawings of. I'm, I'm just working up these repeated patterns already. I'm thinking about doing yeah. something with pattern. Yeah. But they're skyscrapers, and this particular one, these were two actually. I've just been repeating and seeing what will happen. You can see it's, it looks really nice if you put it up against yeah. the window. I love that. I quite often we'll draw yeah. on windows. You can see the light behind it. Yeah. Um, but what I've actually been doing is, I quite often do, is taking the back and I've actually coloured the back with chalk. Oh, I can see it, yes. So that when you put it against a dark surface, like right. this chair, yes. they glow. So that's just chalk? Like it is just... School chalk. Um, Nobody it's uses actually, school chalk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's a chalk pencil, I think. Right, yeah. Um, and then, because I usually work in these layers, I've also been making these, which are kind of CR, bits of tracing paper with... Um, it's like an, it's actually a mix of oil paint and uh, white spirit. Right. Very, very fine. So it's thin enough to see through it still. Yes. But 
thick enough to get some pigment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm making these layers, which are going to lie, uh, be the be the kind of background layer to these drawings. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you hold it up, hold the both up again. Yeah, you can see it. Now I was wondering whether the chalk might then. Oh, I see. Good. Stand I think out it probably. Be dark. Yeah. It if I put a thicker layer on, it yeah. probably would. But then if you take, yeah, put it back down with the. <laughs> down here. Then, then the white is standing out. It glows the again. Yeah. 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 So this makes me think. What am I? If I have a black background, yeah. then actually I can show you. I've been looking at different backgrounds. So the very back page, I've got. A very beautiful blue carbon paper carbon paper yes <laughs> which if you can see it's uh, yeah, beautiful there yeah. but if it's dark that the buildings will glow but if i use a white paper like this mm -hmm. you won't get quite the same feel to it yeah so i'm just experimenting at the moment so mm -hmm. i've got piles and piles of these bits of paper see what i love about it is i get lots of people contact me and, you know, and they want it to be perfect first time and this is this is just an ultimate mashup isn't it, it is really, isn't it? never worry about keep, that keep adding and subtracting yeah exactly and i never yeah. use never use a pencil i just yeah. just go straight in there it doesn't matter yeah. just, this is another just i quite like the idea of doing these triangular landscapes so i've been looking at a landscape and right. just choosing three buildings or three sort of sets of buildings mm. in a triangle so I really like that pattern. Yeah. I, saw, I might do another and always make a diamond. Yeah. So I think that's one of the patterns I'm going to repeat that or some, in some form. Because you could have something really in the foreground here as the roof. Yes, you could. <laughs> yeah. Right down to the floor. Right down to the ground, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. And then um, oh, this is a smaller one. Oh, that really shows up. You can, yeah, you can kind of see. Yeah. Uh, they look initially like reflections, but they're not. They're just they're six individual buildings. Mm. Some of them are upside down. I just really like this idea of making a pattern yeah. with them. Because um, the way that the skyscrapers are designed it are actually like really, they're patterns, a lot of them, because there's so much for repetition. Yeah. So I've been working a lot with textiles recently. And I've been using actually fabric to work on instead of paper. Mm. So that'd be really nice to try out a different um, ways of patterning buildings themselves. Yeah. And you got you got a, a Batman Marvel comic thing there. What's that about? Oh, uh, this is a, it's actually a Star Wars comic. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> it says Jewel with a Dark Lady. I quite often. And where does that fit? Well, I mean, because I work in these layers, quite often the very back layer, I use uh, pages from old magazines and comics as the back. So I thought it'd be really interesting to try out some different, I've got a collection of these magazines and I thought why don't I try out some of these with some of my drawings. Yeah. So this was just one that I had lying around in the studio. But what I like to do is layer them up so that the back image is almost completely obscured. Right. Keep layering them. And so you get a kind of, yeah. you'll get elements of the original. Yes. But parts of it you can't tell. Yeah. What, what it originally was so that's just again like another one of a, one of many scraps of paper lying around the studio that yeah. I might um, so in the you could with. almost take this away at the end mm. and yet this has been the whole inspiration and starting exactly, point exactly yeah. yeah and quite often I've worked with one maybe one page and say I've worked up the drawings in a huge amount of detail and then suddenly I take this away and put something else there and think actually that works a lot better, yeah. And that becomes the final, yeah. um, the final sort of la layer to the drawing, yeah. I suppose. It's a completely different way of thinking. And and where does this layer thing come from? Because it's because I I know when I first started using Photoshop and things like that, and, mm. and it was I do remember my mind actually being rewired. Yeah, because. You are. You always start thinking about layers, aren't you? Yeah. The um, but uh, to be honest, initially, I was really interested in how comic book artists uh, work, yeah. and they will quite often have a layer. They'll have a separate person, separate artist doing the ink, yeah. the black ink layer. They'll have a, somebody called an inker who will do the color layer. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody else doing the text. So it, the way that they used to work was. It fit like a breaking down of the physical layers. Yeah. So they would work on these pieces of tracing paper to build up an image. 
So that's why I initially started doing it. And then when Photoshop came in, you started thinking about you would scan an image and then you would do your colour on one layer and you would do um, something else on a different layer. Yeah. It's quite nice to actually think about that while you're making like physical drawings yeah. as opposed to being on a computer. Yeah. That's quite a nice way to work. Yeah. And of course, D Disney, of course, is working on layers and they would they would actually physically have the camera with, mm. with, with kind of layers, almost like a stage on its yes, side, yeah. so that the camera could focus in and through. Like also moving, yeah, yeah, and, and also so that then you can sort of move things behind and yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah. so you'd have uh, yeah, something so moving around, in there, yeah. which has now got you thinking, hasn't it? I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> there's an idea, shoe. <laughs> <laughs> what goes around comes around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you can work. I like. I do like working with computers, but yeah. there is something about taking those techniques and like using them to make drawings. So yeah. kind of looking forward in a way, but also using it in quite a traditional sense. Yeah. Um, you can kind of sort of new things happen. So in doing like in working with colours, I found that of by separating out the colour layer yeah. you get something there's something quite ghostly about what happens to the drawing which yeah. is perfect for when I'm drawing these like ruined cities yeah. to have like a really ghostly feel is actually perfect for for the final drawing yeah